Hey, 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 hey. What's up, everybody? What is up? OCD Mikey here. Hi-Fi guy. What's happening? I'm ready for action. Let me uh, let the, the humanoids chalk up into the, uh, into the queue here so I know I've got people watching. <clears throat> I forgot to put this uh, video up earlier to let people know that I am uh, doing a live stream. So if nobody comes, I hang it up. So anyways, I'm going to sit here for a little while and see what happens. Um, there we go. There's, a, there's, there's, there's some peeps showing up. <clears throat> I've got some fun stuff to talk about, man. Let's see who shows. What's up? Uptown Reef. I suppose I should probably do more advertising for my live stream, shouldn't I? I've been so damn busy, you guys. Yo, what is up? Audio is pretty good. Hey, Nick. What's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Fantasy. The fantasy. Panasy. Uh, what's up, Bill Farrell? Um, sir, love your content. Thank you, Zach. Lichty. So stopping by before getting the grill going. Wanamaker. What's up, brother? How's that car stereo coming along, brother? Wanamaker does some kick-ass cool car stereo stuff. What's up, Chris Moeller? Chris. I just talked to Chris. Chris just bought one of the DAX, man. Chris just bought one of the the last uh, of the uh, of the uh, AA DAX that I just told you guys about, man. That thing is a freaking killer, bro. I've got it in there right now, and it has it's. I I, I haven't put the playback in. I've got that thing sitting in there. I'm using it with the NAT audio preamp, even though I don't I'm, I'm I don't need a preamp because the volume control. I'm going to see how it sounds with and without, and I'm going to let you all hear, uh, and I'll do that video where I play it with and without the preamp, because some DACs sound better with preamps. Um, I think a lot of people mistook my video when I said preamp is not necessary. I'm talking about the, 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 the preamp is not necessary when we're talking about a playback designs DAC. When we're talking about most other DACs, you need a preamp to sweeten things up or to make it you know, in many, in many, in many ways. Um, but I always suggest try it without the dat, without the preamp, because some people like it a little more clear. Malcolm, what's up, Malcolm? Long time no talk to, brother. You guys all know Malcolm. He is our, he's the tribe helicopter pilot, man. He's he's the one that 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 man. I wish, dude. I someday, dude. It's like I fantasize, Malcolm, that we live in a in a huge mansion somewhere with a helo pad on the on the top of the place and like and 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 the tribe lives there and um all you all are there with us we've got a whole grounds right and uh we hang out we listen to tunes we grill we cook food charles is there making eggs and cocoa and making freaking ricotta pie and uh and and then and then when the shit hits the fan, we jump in the helo helicopter. That's what uh, uh, Malcolm made it clear. It's not a freaking chopper. It's not a helo. It's a fucking helicopter, um, and it's an aircraft. And uh, and 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 man, it, I'll just tell you that shit is fun, Malcolm. I miss it, dude. You get to do that shit every day. But I I I am jonesing. At, I I got used to it. And it's in my blood, I feel now. I want to go up and hover around. I love that feeling of hovering. It's just the, the coolest feeling. Just like I went shooting the other days, you guys. I don't know if any of you all shoot, but I went shooting at a range with a 308 um, at 600 yards. I was tagging shit, tagging a target 600 years, uh, 600 um, years, 600 freaking yards away. That is cool shit. Like it's, it's that, that I got that, that got shit got in my blood too. 
Oh, let's see. Hey, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, let's see. I'll start this. Mal Capone said, what's up, Chris? We'll show you. Give Chris some props because he got the double A DAC. Um, Wanamaker, beautiful as always, his car stare. Wanamaker, you know I'm going to hit you up when I want to do a car rig again. Um, uh, you're going to be, look, if I, if I, if I, I could go up there and pull, I got a tube driver, Butler tube driver right up there. I can see it brand new in the box still from way back and NOS. Hey Mikey, um, for the AA DAC, would you say it's an upgrade over Exogal Comet Plus? Um, yeah, I, I would say. I like not having a preamp, which is why I keep the Exegal. The Exegal was a really good piece. Um, you know, I'd have to send it to you and say, you tell me, brother. I mean, I'm putting this thing in, and let's put it this way. I've got the playback sitting here, and um, I haven't felt like I, I got to get this little thing out of here so I can put the playback in. Typically, I do. Typically, if I have another DAC in, I'm antsy. Um, because I need to get the playback in. So it's like, so I can sigh of relief, but it hasn't, that hasn't happened to me um, with this. I put it in and I'm like, it's all good, man. I mean, the music sounds freaking awesome. Now it could be the speakers and I've got a kick-ass preamp and I've got some other shit in there that sounds really freaking good, but it, it is working. So I would say, Neil, buy the AA DAC, put it in. I'll guarantee you that it beats the exogal. And if it doesn't, then you can send it back. I'll give you all your money back. No restock fee. Okay. And then that's the only way we're going to find out is for me to send it to you. So, and then, and then you can tell me, man, give us the feedback. That'll help me build my database of things it beats, you know? Um, enjoyed the Maggie upgrades vid, Mikey. Thanks, Nick. I, someone had to do it, bro. Someone had to do it. You know, um, people don't understand Magnapan. It's like, and, and, the thing that made me really make that video was the people in the response section. You know, oh, MagnaPan doesn't know what they're doing. Oh, they're such, how could they be so stupid to do shit like that? And it's like, and, 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 you know, he wasn't correcting them at all. He's just letting people slag on the brand and it turns into a slag fest. So I needed to, uh, I needed to make a video to, to, to offset that and just say, look, you guys, you're, you're, you're clueless about how these, Magnapans were made. They were made to be different and they're made for a thousand dollars. You guys are getting weird about uh, speakers that are a thousand dollars. I mean, talk about crumb snatchers. It's like, dude, you're really getting upset at Magnapan because they didn't make the thousand dollar pairs fucking, uh, excuse me, freaking planar magnetics for a thousand bucks, handmade in USA. Uh, uh, they didn't make the thousand dollar pair good enough for you. Like, dude, what kind of crack are you guys smoking? Um, that's that's how I feel, you know? So I get a little defensive of my homies in Minnesota, you know, because they work hard and they're good guys and the product is solid, man, or they wouldn't be successful for as many damn years as they have been. So they're doing something right. And when I saw the curves and stuff, he's trying to say, oh, look how messed up they do it. I'm like, clearly there's more to this than uh, meets the eye. Let me call up Maggie. And they uh, they gave me... They, I sat with them and they, they told me, we, here's how they're designed and here's what they're designed for. So it, it made sense. Awesome video today of the Magnum Pan. Thanks, uh, Fiery Chili Peppa. Um, I appreciate that, man. Um, I think uh, I, I, got, I, I just saw the slagging that was going on in the brand and I'm like, okay, let me, uh, let me, let me write this a little bit. Um, listening to Grand Funk, Railroad, and War. Oh, yeah, dude. I love both those bands. War. I haven't listened to War in a while. I love Eric Burden, man. Eric, almost anything Eric Burden with the animals and shit, man. I like Eric Burden. Hey, Casey. What's up, brother? Welcome. A drago. A drago. Count Dracula. What is up? What is down? <laughs> the left side is up. The right side is down. Masher, can you be there? Yeah. Hell yeah, you can, man. Mashi, mashi tup. Mashi tup. You want to be there. You you will be there, man. Part of the whole crew. Preamp is a must. The DAC cannot drive effortlessly, period. Uh, that's bullshit, brother. You know, you, you haven't had a playback designs. The playback designs can drive effortlessly. It can drive 100 foot um, XLRs. It has 12 fucking volts on the output, bro. Tell me that can't drive effortlessly. 12 volts can drive effortlessly. So. I give you one of these numbers. Okay. 
Um, normal DACs uh, need a preamp, but kick-ass output sections that are built by studs, they don't need the preamp. Okay. Now, if you look, if you want to go buy a twenty-six thousand dollar freaking volume control, something for twenty-six grand makes the sound go up and down, and that's your trip, then do it, bro. Okay. But Playback Designs has built their output section in in, in such a, a a well done way that it doesn't it doesn't require it as long as you don't have analog. If you have analog, you are handcuffed to a preamp. Okay. If you don't have analog, then you can use um, a DAC that has a good volume control. There's only a couple really that have uh, all the other ones need preamps. So most of the time, but you can't say it period the bullshit. Um, anyways, every time we landed, everyone thought Mikey was the boss man. That was so funny out Malcolm, you know, it, it was like, okay, so I'll, I'll give you guys the layout. So what, what happened, Malcolm's a helicopter pilot and he's a client of mine and a friend. And I found out, at, you know, uh, he, he called me up one night and I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I'm going to. No, he started telling me. He was complaining. Oh, I got to go to L.A. And I got to go to, um, oh, what was the name of, of the place? Um, where Pebble Beach, but I can't remember the name of the airport. And he's like, oh, I got to go to Carmel, you know, or whatever. Oh, I got to go to Carmel and da, da, da. And I'm like, dude, are you going to be at Pebble Beach? He's like, yeah, we got a helicopter there. It just got the interior redone by Bentley. And it's like the coach work has all been redone and it's sitting there to show the people at the show, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, I'm going to be there. I'm like, can I catch a ride back with you to um, New York? Cause he's taking the damn helicopter from California to New York. And he got it cleared, man. I could, it was cool for, for him to take me. So I went in the back now, him and his co-pilot, um, they're two guys you know, wearing their pilot shirts and their shit and their headsets and their mics and all that shit, you know, all official. And uh, and I'm in the back, right, in this luxury coach work freaking, what was it, a Sikorsky? Um, or a, um, I think it was, yeah, I, I can't, I, I remember at the time, I, I totally knew the model and all that stuff. But, um, and and then, and, and so we would land at these different airports um, or the F, FOBs um, and, uh and we would land at it's private airports, right? And and you land, and the people that are, uh, you know, the guys that are on the on the on the on the tarmac that come up and whatever they do, block the wheels or give it fuel or whatever they're doing there. You know, they all oh they all come look who's in the back, who's in the back. You know, they're expecting some rock star or some shit. And then I come out, and then they don't know who I am, right? They don't know I'm some punk ass OCD Mikey hi fi guy. But they think I'm some, who knows, billionaire guy or whatever. So it's just funny. And then Malcolm would play it up and Mal Malcolm would be like, hey, boss. Like, what do we, <laughs> he would call me boss. It was just funny shit. We were playing, man. It was just fun, man. I had I had so much fun. Uh, that was, that was, that was, Malcolm, thank you so much for that, brother. I got to give you thanks for that because for you, that's just everyday work. For me, that was the freaking trip of a lifetime. Like that is a memory that I will never forget. I cherish that. Every time we came in, we'd go get dinner. We had a cool FOB. We had a rental car. We just pull up to these cool little FOBs, which are teeny ass private airports. And it's just like, you just walk onto the tarmac. You feel like such a, a, a freaking, I mean, there's nothing like more free than that. You really realize, holy shit, man. I feel about as free as you could as an American in the United States on, on a private aircraft. It's uh, incredible. I'm like, and I, I remember thinking to myself, there's no way we could do this like in, in China or R R Russia or whatever, any of those. I mean, it's like, what are the odds that you could even do this anywhere? Super cool. So it was a lot of fun. Anyways. What's up, Giserio? Are you are you serio? Un serio? Um, good to see you, man. Hello, Fernando. Hello, Mikey. Any thoughts on horn speakers? Yeah, man. I got a lot of thoughts. Pros and cons. Pros are they're very efficient. You can use any little teeny little amp with them. So any amp will work with them. You hear everything. So the con is you hear everything. So it's both a pro and a con. Um, 
they're very unforgiving. Horns are unforgiving. They force you to have everything else very, very sorted. So um, horns on one side are a lot of fun because you really hear into the music very well. But on the other side, you, they're really unforgiving and they can be a precision. It's like a precision instrument. It's like a, uh, a, um, uh, a scalpel, you know, really. It's like a surgical instrument, you know, at that level. Um, the brand I like, um, I don't know about the U.S. brands. Um, I like songs or, or song. I always want to call them songs, a song or audio. But I don't think he's a horn. He's just a full range driver. I like the avant garde. The avant garde is the is the the horn speaker that I like. Um, what do I think about audio research? I don't really have too much thoughts about audio research. Um, I I think the brand is not the 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 what it used to be. I think it is a brand that the tubes um, uh, sound closer to solid state than they do to tube. Um, in my experience. Uh, I, I feel that um, in some cases they may be overpriced, um, not in the case of the entry level, which I think is the coolest by far of all the audio research stuff is that entry level piece. In fact, so much that I talked to Val at the show and I was like, dude, I, I, I want to sell that entry level piece. Like, let me get one of those. Let me listen to it because if it's as good as, I, as, as it sounds, and it's $5,500, and it's made in the United States, and it has four 6550s, then, dude, I'm totally, that I'm going to sell that as an entry-level amp for people for it, that want an entry-level tube integrated. It's, like, super great value. So on, on one side, audio research, I'm not enamored, and then on the other end, I'm totally enamored. So it's a mixed bag. OCD Mikey for king. <laughs> we don't have kings here. <laughs> But I'll take that, man. I, those those crowns are pretty cool, man. You know, and the food's got to be good. I'll bet you that. Mikey, you'll be at Expona. Man, dude, I don't want to go to Expona. Like, I, I mean, I, I, w I would love, I'm not doing a tribe meetup, but I, I would, fucking A, I mean, oh, God, I have the feeling that I'm just going to have to go. I don't want, I'm going to Munich, man. I'm going to Germany. I'm going to go to the Munich show. I'm going to go to Europe. And, uh, you know, going to, uh, uh, I don't want to go to the zoo that is Expona, but man, if I'm seeing my peeps, how am I going to say no to you guys if you guys want me to come, you know? So, David, I just met David. What's up, brother? Thanks for joining, man. David's in Fort Worth. He invited me down for a steak and for some kick-ass barbecue at a place called Panther. Is it the Panthers? Panther. I just remember Panthers. That's what it was. Panthers, Panthers, something or other. Anyways, David is into electronics music, into electronic music, man. Anybody into house music and shit, David is, is really knows his way around electronic music. Moog uh, synthesizers, which you guys know I love, and um, all that sort of. David plays the 24 string. African instrument called the can't remember. And um I really want to hear that shit. He's got a CD. David's been all around the world playing that instrument. So Nick, we got another musician in the crew. Uh I love my musicians, man. I love that I get to hang with artists. Um, an artist too, man. I have the coolest freaking artist. Man, some of my clients make the coolest freaking art. I love you guys, man. We we have the coolest tribe around. We are the coolest for sure. There's the most mixed, diverse group of people that have so multifaceted talents. Um, I just love to interface with you guys. I love the phone calls. I love the, <clears throat> the conversations I have. Even more than that, I love to get together with you guys and have great dinners and 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 spend time together. <clears throat> that is the most fun. I got something in my throat. Excuse me. Hope you didn't get the AMSR swallow on that. The swaller. Um, Mikey was awesome. It was a blast from West to East Coast. I know, Malcolm. We got to do something like that again, brother. Let me know anytime you have to go pick up some shit, and I will fly out there, and we. I would love to do that again. Even if you're going from uh, Florida up again, dude, um, that was epic. It was so cool, you guys. Mikey, have you checked out aesthetics? Yes, I carry aesthetics. Um, you love your Romulus. I know Romulus is part of the 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 um the Pandora. 
with volume control. Did you, did you, oh, you know, no, I don't know. There's a guy in New Mexico. I had a Romulus CD with volume control that I bought for a local client. Then I gave him, then he wanted it integrated. So I got him the Jeff Roland Continuum S2, which had a DAC on it. And I bought the Romulus back. Then I sold it. But the Romulus, man, we put that thing in. And with some kick-ass tubes, dude, you get some like CCA tubes, some really high-end NOS tubes. That thing is off the charts. And the coolest thing about the Romulus, which is the same as the Pandora, which is something I use sometimes to tell stories, is that it's a single chip DAC. It has one Delta Sigma DAC, DAC chip. It doesn't even use one per channel. It shares a DAC chip, and it is one of the best DACs I've heard. So when people say, oh, you can't have a DAC, it sounds crappy if you have a chip, or oh, you need four chips per channel or whatever. No, man, listen to an aesthetics. That's all there is to it. I love Jim White. I love the brand. So yeah, Peter, it's a good, it's a good brand. Did you have some good barbecue or brisket while visiting here in Texas? Hi, Michael. Um, I did, brother. Um, I, I did have some brisket, which is what I was after. I, I made them, I don't know that I made the mistake, but where okay, so here's how it went. Typically, I go after hole in the wall places. I go after the little single location joints. Okay. I don't want chains. And Dallas is like, that whole place is one big chain everything. Chain hotel, chain store, chain restaurant, chain freaking apartment complex. It, it is just so commercialized that um, I really wanted to go downtown or go to Fort Worth, go to somewhere older so I could get some down home pit style barbecue some of the dirty shit, somehow where I had to roll up my sleeves and get into the barbecue. Unfortunately, I didn't get that. I got the real clean place. I went to Papa's, Papa's uh, Delta Blues, um, which is the place that I went. And I had a rib and a brisket combo plate. And the brisket was uh, to die for. It had brisket bark on the outside. And it was like salty and fatty. And, and it was so soft. And it melted in my mouth, and I was in straight heaven. I got the ribs, but the ribs, I was like, no. The ribs were dry. They were just a little dry. They weren't, man, you got to go to Carolina for the ribs, right? You go to Texas for brisket. So um, so I, next time I go, I'm not going to get ribs. I'm not going to make that mistake. I'm only going to get brisket, and I'm going to make sure I get down to the Panthers, whatever, Panther City. Sounds like a strip club, you know, in the black part of town. <laughs> um, and so that's um, I, when I come back, I will go straight for brisket and Panther City, which is in Fort Worth or whatever. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> it's right here. Panther City. That's so funny, dude. That should be a strip club. Uh, shouldn't it? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Um, but uh, uh, so... That sounds great. So yeah. So anyway, so I had I had great brisket. I had mediocre ribs. I would not go back to Papa's Delta Blues. I will go back to a hole in the wall, smoky place with like checkered plastic tablecloths. Like that's the joint that I want. So I'll do it next time I come. Still awake this time. Hello from Germany. What is up, man? How are you? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Vilkeman? Is that it? What is what welcome? Welcome. I don't know what it is. I think it's Vilkeman. Is the Romulus a good CD DAC compared to Jeff Roland Aries? Uh, yes, they're both great. Um, the, the difference is Romulus um, has an analog relay volume control. So that's a little higher end. And Romulus um, has a transport, which uh, Jeff Roland Aries does not. And Romulus um, you can change the tubes. So you can change the sound of it, which you can't do that with the Jeff Roland. But the Jeff Roland is a very good DAC. And the good thing about the Jeff Roland Aries is on the second on the secondhand market, nobody knows what it is. So it sells for peanuts on the secondhand market, and you can get yourself a really kick-ass DAC. Cora. Cora is the instrument. That's what David plays, the Cora. That that I, it's super cool, man. I I just uh, I, I want to hear it. I'm I'm gonna seek it now. P L Mikey and gang. What is up, Shane? Good to see you. 
21 strings. That's a lot, man. So that must be a big neck. Do you, do you hold it sitting up like this and do one of these numbers? Like, do you know what I mean? Or does it lay down and you do the, one of these numbers? Let us know. Steve DeHarty, what's up, Mike? What's up, Mikey? Hi, Mikey. I'm getting confused. Steve DeHarty, hi, Mikey. Hi, Stevie. Did you talk to uh, Vox? We, we, are, are you A-OK? -okay? You locked and loaded on those drivers? Steve, again, is uh, Granite Audio, and Steve uh, is, is making a really kick-ass set of um, baffle open baffle Granite speakers that are I've heard, and they're phenomenal, and he's, he's taking it upstream. With that double-A amp you have, uh, it's not called oh, audio analog amp. Have you uh, be good for a pair of, totally good for a pair of deals. Um, um, I'm running 2007 Sim Audio amp and Exogal. Sometimes the speakers can be a bit sharp. Well, yeah. I don't know what it is in there. Um, those speakers are very unforgiving. Um, so I think this, I know this amp is definitely not sharp. This amp is very musical. It's a, it's a beautiful class AB. Um, you know, so I, it, it would definitely be great with teals. It would, it would power them. No problem. It's stable to two ohm. Don't apologize for not going to Expona. <laughs> I know Charles is supporting me in that. Thanks, Charles. I missed last week, Shane. I'm glad to be able to be in front of my phone this week. There you go, brother. Thanks, man. I was at Montreal Audio Show over the weekend. It was good to see the Montreal Audio community come together. The show was a full three days. I saw the snow. I was like, oh, yuck. I'm glad you guys came together because I wasn't going to do it. Fort Party Worth? Is that what they call it? <laughs> Thoughts on the Forte amps? Um, Forte. Which one? To tell me more. I don't know what the hell you're... I'm trying... I'm, I'm racking my brain. I don't know what it is. Danny responded, do you accept the challenge? I don't know, man. What, what, I don't... What's the challenge? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't really need to, to... Engage. I got. I got my thing. What? What is the challenge? Tell me what the. First of all, tell me what it is. You never know what it is. I don't care. Um, if it if it sounds good, I'll take that guy to the mat. I'm not afraid of him. Thoughts on silver ABC being best attenuation that exists. What is ABC? Analog volume control being best attenuation that exists. Yet big lack of high end brands using it. Silver analog volume control. Well, what do you mean? Best attenuation would probably be a stepped attenuator. Uh, you got to go a little deeper. M Connect control is running on an old Samsung phone with newest release. Sadly, not in my Xiaomi newer phone. Really strange. Well, that's what you get for buying a Chinese phone. <laughs> I had to take the. I had to do that. You know, I had to do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. M Connect has been acting weird with me too today. Um, but, but, every, you know, I, I just don't know w what it is. So let me know if you figure it out. I'll be, I'll be checking it out. Cattle, Cadillac barbecue would have sent you there, but it isn't open on Monday. Um, uh, mom is still hanging on. Oh, I haven't been doing much else than spend time with her. Good for you, brother. That's what you want to do. Danny responded to your video. We sold over a hundred mag. Well, we don't give a shit. Um, um okay so whatever danny you know i guess you're better than magna pan that's what he's saying you know i've sold over 500 of my magna pan kits but i don't slag the brand you know so whatever we're happy for him i don't know what the challenge is but you know i ain't afraid to know fucking running man um, 
Let's see. Where am where are we, man? I lost my spot. Um okay. Any active speaker setups? No, I'm not into active speaker setups. Autoformer. Oh, autoformers made by Intact, rehoused by Emia. I'm not into autoformers. I don't like it. I like I like gain. If I'm gonna use something like that, I like gain. So I don't know anything about it. I'm not sure. Access Forte 1 or 3. Access Forte. I have no idea what that is, man. Never even heard of it. Go see your other videos, comments. What other videos? It's in it's in it's in one of my videos. I don't care if he sold 100 is that that's that, that's what he's saying. I mean, whatever. I'll see. He doesn't like that guy that did the Maggie upgrade video is much like audio science review. Another guy pumping his ego. That's right. I mean, look, man. I mean, Danny's got his little guys that are his little followers, you know, and good for him. So do I, you know, but I just don't, you know, agree with slagging and trying to point out and say somebody's not doing it right. Look, just say what I do is different, you know, cool. What you do is different, bro. But to like act like you're the messiah, you know, and like and 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 you know, just say what you do is different, you know. It's it's it, it really but to be like, oh, they do it wrong, they're so shitty. I'll look at the video comments later and respond. But you know, I don't care. I I it, it, this is fun, man. You know, it's fun to to fuck around a little bit. It gets boring in on YouTube, you know. Every once in a while, it's fun to stir it up. Um, audio analog deck compared to MPD-8. Well, <laughs> what do you think? The MPD-8 is a lot better. What did you expect? Borison, cheaper stuff. Wes, Bor Borison. There is no N in there. It's Borison. Um, cheaper stuff. What, what? Are you asking a question, Wes? Like, is it any good? Um, I'm not sure what you're trying to say, Wes. Um, yeah, I did that and the MPD-8 destroyed it. Um, you did what? Um, the MPD-8 destroyed it. Audio analog DAC? Um, I, 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 I don't, uh, what, what, what did we compare the MPD-8 to? Uh, someone was talking about a different DAC. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit. Um, I, I, it's hard for me to keep keep track of all this shit. Any chain needs attenuation at some point. You can replace stepped ladder with auto former. It's mind blowing. Um, auto former is um, you know does other weird shit. You know, and it's not necessarily mind blowing. It's mind blowing in the proper environment. If it's not in the proper environment, it sucks because it doesn't have any gain on it. So it can, it can, you can not have enough. You can sit there and turn it all the way up and it doesn't do shit. You know, um, I don't know. I've, I've had people that have had auto formers that are really expensive. They're $10,000 auto formers and um, about the best that could ever be made. Right. And they have problems with them. Sometimes they don't work with everything. They only work with something. So I get your point. It's cool. You know, but um they're not necessarily, and they don't work with everything, you know, but they are cool. He wrote you a book, and it was upgrade. I can't transfer limited characters. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Good. I got his fucking attention. Um, Forte one or three. You guys are talking. You guys are talking. Um, you guys are having your own conversation without me. Watching the stream with some Sabbath, watching the comments. Yes, this works. <laughs> nice, man. Cool. Cool, man. That's audio music, DAC, Shane, but you lied about that. That's audio music, DAC. Oh, Shane. Oh, audio music, DAC, Shane. Shane had the audio music, DAC, in there, and the MPD-8 killed it. Um, Yeah, so whatever. That's Shane's opinion, and I take his opinion pretty, pretty um, seriously. Got to get to bed, 1.30 a.m. here. Night, chaps. Good night, Anthony. Have a good one, man. Sorry, mate. I compared the audio music deck to the MPD-8 on my channel. Oh, okay. The video is there for all to see. 
and there was no competition. Oh, okay, good for you, man. So you hammered it in a video. Good. Then you can shut everybody up. Mikey, I'm a mentor. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate it. I, I'm not loved by everybody. Yes, I lied. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? You, 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 yeah. Because, because you're a salesman. Shane, you guys don't know. Shane is an, an audio. He doesn't sell. He's not a dealer. So what does he got to, what, why would he lie about anything? Um, Forte is the entry level from Audio Group Denmark. Oh, okay. Got you. It's class D all in one. Oh, that stuff. Made in China internals and assembled in Denmark. Case is CNC MDF. And a, and a, oh, wow. So they just found a way to make it really cheap. That's cool. I mean, I've never heard it. I heard the one that was plastic case. Um, I think it was $11,000. Um, so whatever. They're going to China. I think that's a sellout. It's just like, it's like, you know, they're selling out to try and, 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 and have a bigger piece of the market. I mean, I guess they're just doing the, uh, what is it called? Free enterprise, capitalism, shit, whatever. Greed. <laughs> it's all good. I connected an active AC purifier today from iFi. Worked a treat. Just plug it into a socket next to one for music setup. Cool. Happy for you. Um, my Maggie 3.7i are massive and out of the box. Amazing for the value. Yeah, totally. They are, man. They are. What are your thoughts on mod right gear? Um, uh, it can be okay for some people, you know, um, I've had, a, 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 I've heard of a couple, you know, things that are modded like that aren't always the most reliable. Um, but I think Dan fixes it pretty well. Like, I think he's good like that. Um, some people really like it. I think it's, um, I've never had it, so I don't, I don't really know. Ozzy guy had components on bouncy chining springs, amateur audiophile. E yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's trying to get your goat, uh, 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 Shane. <laughs> oh God, that's funny. Um, yeah, yeah, he's an, he's 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 far from an amateur, dude. Um, used Marshawn crossover over a uh, new Sublime audio. Oh, I don't know. Sublime is less likely to. Used, I, I, I don't know, man. I'd probably go with a new Sublime. Uh, Marchand is good stuff, but it's old school technology. And and, and, it's, and it's, it's I think Mar um, Sublime is less likely to have, um, to be different between left to right channel. I think it's going to be tighter tolerance on a Sublime. That's my feeling. Had the Harley out. Um, uh, I did day before yesterday. Today, I really wanted to ride, but I was super busy packing and shipping stuff man you guys keep me on my damn toes man i can barely go ride motorcycles anymore because i'm selling you i'm shipping you guys all the stuff which by the way thanks for all your business you guys are are, are helping helping uh the cause and um and um i appreciate that so i will have it back out i got a new seat for it um a killer uh um saddleman what is it a road sofa it's a little more comfy than the, the stock seat sucks. Um, so yeah, Cone Man 3, Shane doesn't have Chinese bond. Yeah, he doesn't either. He does have something else. He did Drago, not now. Oh, okay, whatever. Sublime audio crossover is superb. Yes, it is. Um, Con Man, it's called decoupling. And trust me, it worked a lot better than putting back deck on my, uh, my rack. Yeah. Oh, Con... <laughs> <laughs> instead of cone man he's calling him con man oh that's kind of funny you guys are you guys are funny maybe shame but not the best solution i would i would agree i think i think decoupling works for some people um but my my solution is to uh rigid couple stuff um yeah yeah you guys are having fun now okay um trust me man the DAC needed all the help it could get when compared to the mpd8 well it should it should i mean isn't that DAC like a Five thousand dollar DAC or something compared to a twenty five thousand dollar DAC, twenty four thousand dollar DAC. It, it the MPD eight should be better, you know. You guys want me to um look up the, the Danny response, um and see uh so I can I can read it to you guys and we can do this together. I don't know where where I can find it. Let me go to uh, my content. 
go here, go to this. Let's see, what do we have? Party three, okay, here we go, comments. You guys wanna do this? do this with me? Let's see. Uh, I don't see the book written here. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see any response, man. Um, oh, here it is. Mikey, relax. I do, in fact, know what I'm doing. I've worked on a lot of MagnaPan models. Yes, the base panels are a little different left to right. How they are supported, but the crossovers are the same on both speakers. The tweeters are also the same on both speakers. The reason they beam is because they allow the drivers to overlap on top of each other. So moving left to right causes out of phase cancellations. It's not a positive attribute. Allowing each other, allowing each driver to play in their own range really opens up the sound stage. I do agree with you on one point though. It's not just about the measurements. Moving the steel parts from the signal path and stepping up top level parts really improves clarity, detail, level right. Well, we all know that. That's a fact. Maybe instead of speculating about the result, you should give one of your our, our upgrades a try. We've sold over 100 yet, yeah, really love them. So we are either improving. I personally don't think the brainwashing hundreds, hundreds of people is possible. Uh, yeah, there's it's really nothing. There's nothing there. There's no 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 cha uh, challenges. Try try a mod. I'm not interested, dude. I'm really not interested in. Um, a thousand dollar speaker mods, you know, um, but, uh, 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 you know, he's upset because in the end I said, I don't think, I don't think you guys will like it. Um, and, and, uh, you know, I, I should have said, uh, try it, you know, and, and see what you like it. But you know what? The brand got slagged and I'm defensive of MagnaPan. That's all there is to it. I think MagnaPan is a good upstanding brand. Um, I think they're great. They've been around for many years. They provide a great product. They're the only, they're, they're, look at this. They're an American company that makes speakers that are handmade planar magnetic speakers made in the United States, and they sell them for $1,000 a pair. Why do they do that? Okay, that's what I ask myself. What a waste of your freaking time and your logistics to sell a freaking $1,000 speaker. Cut it out of your line. That's my advice to MagnaPan. Get rid of the LRS Plus. Start your speakers at 2,500 bucks. Start them with the 0.7 and just get rid of that bullshit, okay? Nobody necessarily, now they do it because, I don't know, they love you guys or they just want to, you know, be, you know, um, really give back to the audio community, but whatever. What happens when you put out um, a $1,000 speaker is you get people that are cheapskates trying to make it better. They complain. They don't have enough money to buy $2,000, $5,000 speakers. So they're the nitpickers, you know? And it's like the, the, in, in many ways, and, I'm, and I don't mean to diss anyone, but look, I'm a seller. And, and the low end of the market are, 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 are many times the worst clients to deal with. The top level guys that spend 25 grand on speakers, they're like not, they're, they're so easy. They don't give a shit about the time that it's just, if it's going to take longer, they don't care. They're like, whatever, because they're not concerned. They could lose their 25 grand and they're not going to trip, right? Um, I'm not saying they're planning to, but it's like they don't freak out. Whereas guys that really have to, oh my God, you know, like spending $1,000 is a lot to them. They're tripping balls. If they lose their $1,000, they're going to lose their freaking mind, you know? Um, so it's a different client and, and, and it's, so um, what my advice is, is why, why do they even do it? So the, 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 the point is MagnaPan is doing something huge for the market with that speaker. And to slag them about it, to slag them on a $1,000 hand built in United States, planar magnetic, to me, just period, is, 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 is effed up. Shut your mouth, man. Respect the brand. You know, don't slag on their entry level $1,000 piece. It's a thousand freaking dollars, dude. Are you doing something like that? No, they're not. So that is why I'm pissed. That is why I came back with this thing. I'm defending MagnaPan. Okay. Um, and, 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 and that's why. So that's it. Um, 
Okay. So I need to make some popcorn. <laughs> I know. I can guarantee you guys a little drama if you really want some drama, you know. Um, no Drago. It just sounds better when I say con man. <laughs> uh, you guys are too much. Okay. The spring devices led me to my idea for a new product. No, look, uh, con man, con man. I, I got to call you con man now too. <laughs> um, first of all, if you got an idea for a new product that's super cool, you should share it with us. Next of all, I don't like springs either, okay? So I, I, I'm not a spring guy either. Springs can work in high five vibration absorption. Okay, I'm not a spring guy, me, okay? Danny trashing speaker designers while selling crossovers shouldn't surprise anybody. Yeah, well, you know, I guess, you know, I guess, you know, but it's like, it's like, I just think um, slagging Magnapan, come on, man. Pick somebody like Magico. Pick somebody like Wilson. Pick somebody that's selling three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars speakers to give shit to, but don't 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 slag on the company that's making a thousand dollar made in USA planar magnetics for you. You know, um, it's so disrespectful and and uncool um, in so many ways. And whatever, even if you can make it better, great, make it better, but don't go make a video and show like how how shitty the curves are on this one thousand dollar speaker. It's like. Oh God, dude, don't you have better things to do, bro? You know, it's like, you know, that's, that's all. Running man. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, uh, I'm just teasing. I'm just saying that because I think he's a runner. Um, accept the challenge by saying, send it for free and you will give an honest review. No, man. I mean, I, I, I would, but I don't care, you know? So I don't want to do it for the clicks. Like, right. Like you guys understand I could do that for Danny right now. There's a little bit of drama. I could whoop this up into a frenzy and, and we could make it this big thing. And Danny and I could do a video and have us both with our arms up and be like, Mikey fights Danny. And that, you know, all this shit just to train, to get the trained monkeys to click. Right. But you guys got to understand, I don't, I'm not interested in doing the monkey job. You know, I'm not into that dudes. Um, and, um, you're going to, you're going to see it more and more now that I've look, I've got $25,000, 25,000 subs. That's enough. Um, that I, I I'm selling enough that I'm maxed out on, on what I sell. So I, uh, you know, more people would, would, you know, uh, uh subscribers and all that kind of stuff. I don't care about the money from freaking YouTube. Right. So I don't care about getting a hundred thousand subscribers or a million subscribers or whatever these other guys have. So I'm not going to use the tricks. Um, out of respect, excuse me, out of respect for you guys, I'm not going to clickbait your asses. I'm not going to engage in, in drama because I know it's going to do, it's going to get clicks. Okay. I did that in the beginning. I tried it just to test it out to see, and it worked. Y'all clicked a lot more. And I saw, here's how I can train the monkeys to click. Um, but I don't have pride in that. That doesn't make me crap proud knowing I got a bunch of people to click because I used manipulation. Okay. So, um, in, 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 in psychology and, and it's, it's psychology for dumb dumbs 101, right? It's like tricking a cow into, um, eating some clover out of your hand or some shit like that. It's like, you know, how do you trick, um, uh, uh the masses, you know, I'm just, it doesn't, I, I just, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, I, it didn't feel good to me. You know, it didn't feel good to me. Then you start scheming. How, what's the next tricky thing I could put? What's the next clever clickbait title I can use and photo and I can get my face right in here with this and do, and you start scheming this shit that I'm like, that's not how I want to use my creative mind is how to, how, how to manipulate people into clicking. So that's why I'm not going to contact. I'll, I'll respond to Danny in a, in a respectful way, but I'm not going to, I don't, I don't care about, um, 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 ab ab about critiquing a mod for a thousand dollar Magnapan that has engineered shortcomings in it so that it could be brought to you for a thousand dollars. It's like a silly, it's like a silly pursuit. If, and I hope you guys can get that. Um, and, and, and it would be a perfect opportunity for Danny and I to join forces and, and, and get many clicks. Because Danny's got a whole separate little crew than I do, and and we could we could get in this little thing back and forth, and it would be fun, and we could whatever. But it's 
it's not genuine for me. It's not genuine for me. Um, I, I don't think Danny's a bad guy. I just, again, protecting MagnaPan, okay? That's all. I think MagnaPan needed, um, uh, um, um, I, I don't care if they needed it or not. Maybe they didn't need it, but I felt like saying something. I'm not a guy that's like, keeps my mouth shut and, t and you know, I'm, I'm a vocal person, you know? Um, so anyways, so I, I, I don't think I will, I will do it. I'm not interested and I'm sorry. Um, yes, correct about Danny. I don't like his method on his channel, always trashing speaker manufacturers and believing that he's the be all and end all shit. That's kind of the thing, you know, um, that, that's kind of the thing and, and whatever. I mean, if you're doing that to Magico, that's what Danny should do. Do it to Magico, do it to Wilson, show us how their stuff's messed up. You know, um, I already have some ideas about uh, Wilson after spending some time with one of them um, recently, but, but, you know, I mean, but, but you do it to Magnapan, the company that's like in USA, like, like bringing you a thousand, you know, I've, I'm not going to say it again. Right. I've, I've said it uh, enough times, but Magnapan is the wrong company to slag on their thousand dollar freaking entry level speaker. Come on, you know, ha have some, have some, you know, hit the big guys. You don't hit the, the little guys in the balls, man. You go after the big dogs right in the throat. <clears throat> the weakness with decoupling is if done by springs, resonances in the hi-fi component can get worse and cause movement of component with poor dissipation. Well, yeah, it's slower. It's less efficient dissipation. And the other thing is springs wear out after a while. You know, they're not always, they don't always have the same properties. Over time, the properties change. Um, so, yeah. I'm a nitpicker. That's why I'm a LS3 5A fan. Give me my Falcons or hell, even some old ass Rogers any day of the week. Wow, dude. Like, I don't understand. That sounds like some British ass jargon to me. And um, I'll have some tea and crumpets, but, you know, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't really want those monitor things, British monitors, whatever that is. I don't even, I don't even ent enter, enter into that. Mike Bucci. What's up, brother? Here's a, a guy from Bucci's from, uh, uh, Colorado. He is in, uh, what, oh, I can't, um, oh man, where is the town? Whatever. Broomfield. It's like, whatever it's, it's Boulder. And, um, and, uh, he is putting together an outdoor rig, a, a, a festival rig made with high-end audio components. This is really going to be cool. So that's what Bucci's doing. He's in his 30s. He's Italian. He's got a great meatball recipe, which I'm totally hitting you up for, brother. And um, y'all ought to know Mike Bucci. You'll know him soon enough. He'll come on the channel one day, and we'll, we'll, all, we'll all know Mike Bucci. He's definitely part of the gang. Good evening, Mikey. Is the MPD-6 the best all-in-one front-end solution under 20K? Well, okay, the MPD-6, yeah, well, you said front-end, okay. Um, MPD-6. You must be talking about MPS-6 is the one with the streamer in it? And that is under 20. Uh, wait, it's 21. I would do it for 20 because it's it's the MPD. The MPD six is the base DAC. That's 15 grand. And then three grand more, you get the transport on it um, for discs and SACD. That's three grand more. And then three grand more from that, you get the streamer, which is the same board that's in the $11,000 streamer. You get it for 3K if you put it into this uh, MPD-6. So you get the MPS-6, which is the all-in-one. It's 21 grand, and it is the best all-in-one solution that I know of at that price point, yes. Also, could the MPD-6 be described as more reference or dead nuts neutral than the enthusiast MPD-8? It is more dead nuts. It is, it is more, okay, so the difference between the 6 and the 8 is the 6 is a little more mid-range forward. It's a little more, so it sounds a little more lively. It's a little more lively in the mids. It's a little, it's just got that liveliness to it. The MPD-8 is more laid back and more refined and, and more reference. So the, the reference is the MPD-8. Um, the enthusiast might be the, uh, the six, but the reference, the end-all be-all is the MPD-8 for sure. 
That's the kingpin Dak. I don't think it gets any better. Um, so, con man, not very original. It's not very original, but I got to say, I didn't think of it, but it's right there in front of me. <laughs> con man, it's a very naive way of thinking. You have no idea what the resonant frequency of any individual component is to know whether it's going to help it or hurt it. It's a good point. Springs belong in reverb. Yeah. <laughs> Well said, says the, I got to go back and see, um, I'm, oh God, I've got to forget it, man. And this time I'm not, if I go back, I got to scroll back. Where is it? Um, Cora, Cora, Cora. So I'm going to rem remember, says the Cora expert. The Cora expert says springs are for reverb. Cora, Cora expert knows, David. At Conman, replacement, uh, replacement of suspension springs is common in turntables like the Lin LP12. Okay. Slag DeVore. <laughs> oh, oh, look at Charles. Wow, Charles. You're really, you're, yeah. Oh, 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 I see. You're saying if Danny wants to slag somebody, Danny should slag DeVore. Yeah, they're probably pals, you know? Um, but I, I would agree. But I, I always think the big dog, the big, the biggest ones, the most expensive ones, just they're begging to be, to be, to be messed with and called out. Man, I got to show you something right now. I'm going to show you guys all 111 of you right now something that is somebody sent me the other day. Oh, look at, look at David's beautiful audio system. You guys want to see David's beautiful audio system? I'm showing them, David. Um, let's see if we can get um, the focus to, to the hand. It's autofocus, so I don't know if we're there. You go. Come on. Come on, focus. Um, let's see if I can get this thing. There you go. Okay, so you see that B and W's, and then he's got um look at that, man. He's got a kick-ass old cord amp. He's got an esoteric. He's got a Berkeley Alpha DAC, which we're gonna switch out for him and get him something better. And look at that beautiful bat up top. That's a balanced, balanced. And look at the stack. See the stack of CDs up there? I remember that. Do you guys remember that? Remember when you used to have the, the, the stack of CDs that those were the only ones you listened to because the other ones sounded horrible. Now, I don't know if that's true, David. I, I see a, a wall of CDs back there. But typically, even when I had a wall of CDs like that, I would have the stack of CDs on top of my shit. And those were the ones that were the ones that sounded best. And all I would do is go back and forth and go back and forth between those things. And, um, and, uh, um, streaming, man, you just get to, you get to go laterally so well. Um, let me see. I am going to, it's funny because people send me images all the time. Like Mikey, look at this. And, um, well, let me see in here. Oh, let me go to my, and, and so here is. The inside of a thirty-five thousand um, dollar, thirty-five thousand dollar. Oops, let me come on, baby. Pop out. How do I get this bitch to pop out? No. Okay. There we go. Okay. So look at that. That is the inside of a Diagostino thirty-six thousand dollar amplifier. A single toroid, not even shielded. Um, we look at the, at the, at the, um, the boards over here and I don't even see any film and foil caps. Whoops. All I see is, um, let's see, let me make this focus Try and get this to focus here. Come on. Come on now. I feel like I'm trying to coax a puppy. Um, there we go. Okay. Um, I don't see any film and foils on those sideboards. You see the boards, like the, the amplifier boards. Let me get a pen here. So the amplifier boards are oops where is this right here along here these are the amplifier output boards um i those look like mosfets because they're kind of little but um um and uh okay so we don't see any film and foil caps we see a really weak power supply like i mean that is not very much capacitance this is a stereo amplifier this is $36,000. Now you see, I see a very elaborate heat sink, a very elaborate box, but, um, 
But uh, man, wait till you see what I'm going to show you guys in a couple days when I make this. I'm going to use that picture in the video that I do of the um, of the audio analog amplifier. Shit. Wait till you guys see what this thing looks like inside. It's built better than that. And it is less than a, it's like a third of the price. Ridiculous. I'm going to hammer it so hard. You, you guys are going to be like standing ovation because it's going to be such a case for, I ought to, Dan, Dan, I, I ought to be an attorney on this one, bro. Um, because I'm going to bring a case with proof. Like I, I, I ought to be in the courtroom on this shit. It's it's going to be such a damning case. It, well, it's it's not going to be meant to damn anything else. It's actually just going to be meant to bolster audio analog and show you how good of an amp you, is available. Two hundred fifty watts a side, zero global feedback, class AB, bipolar front to back, dual mono, um, massive toroids, shielded, um, film and foil caps. It, it's it's it, it's going to make the other ones look ridiculous by comparison. It's going to make the Diagostino look like a POS. It's going to, I'll show the constellation again. I'm going to use Griffin to show you the inside of Griffin and how this, 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 this name that, that, that people think is the best thing in the world, which it may be, right? It may be really that Griffin or, or these other amps sound good, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the value. You know, how could it be that they're that they're that that they that they cost that much and they 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 are the same technology, they're not new technology, it's the same old ass class A B technology. You understand class A B when when something you say it's class A B, that gives us a, a snippet of time that tells us when it was made. Class A is even older shit, right? It's just the type of circuit design. It's when that circuit design was they name them in succession every New one gets a, a, a letter down further down the alphabet. Class D does not mean digital. It means it's a time period. Class D was after the others, you know? So um, anyways, um, it, I agree, Mikey. It's just bullshit. It is a great speaker value for a grand. It's, it's ridiculous. How can you make fun of that speaker? How can you slag it? It's $1,000. I just want to punch someone in the shorts, man. Punch him in the trunks, you know? Thousand dollar Maggie is just the beginning. You need a listening room where you can pull the LRS at plus at least into the room, then a good amp with lots of watts current, then good stands like magnetizers or like Mikey's, the stands that have subwoofers built in. By the way, if anybody wants those, dude, I got a pair out there. I will sell them, dude. They're they're gonna they're four thousand dollar pair of sub stands. They're stands and subs. I'm gonna throw this out there first. 1800 bucks. First 1800 bucks someone wants to send me. You get two in white, beautiful Maggie stands, LRS plus stands with subs. I need them out of here. They're sitting in my living room, dude. I need to move some shit. By the way, if anybody wants some used gear, uh, previously owned stuff, dude, I've got the top of the line uh, Vienna acoustic sitting in there, black piano finish. Those are thirty-five thousand dollars speakers. I'll sell them for ten grand. Get the shit out of my out of my living room, man. I've got I've got stuff. I got to do a garage sale. I, I keep looking around. I go out to my shop and I look and I'm like, Jesus, man. I've got so much stuff here that I'm not going to use. That back in the day I might have, but the way my trajectory is going with everything, I need to sell all my stuff. Motorcycles too. I've got seven motorcycles right now. Four of them need to go bye bye. Anybody wants a Honda XR650 that's baja out, MX Tech suspension, full FMF titanium exhaust, Corbin saddle? I'll sell it for $2,500. I'm going to sell. Look, I'm, I'm, I don't need to worry about pinching pennies these days. I can sell my shit at a really good price. So Mikey's Garage Sale. If you want a freaking motorcycle <laughs> or you want... Hi-fi shit. I've got I've got some cool Japanese DAX. What else do I have? I've got some um, 300B tube amps. Um, I've got uh, I've got some integrated. I've got a killer integrated um, uh, April Music and a DAC. Man, those two were really sweet. Man, with some wicked op amps. That one has an op amp output. Um, look, you guys. Um, if you want some killer deals. 
call me up. Also, go to the Eleven Stereo um, uh, forum, man. You guys, I've got I've got people from the Hi-Fi Tribe that are putting gear on the forum and giving it away for a song. I've got stuff being given away. In fact, I forgot to mention you guys. How am I going to roll this? I've got a pair of sound labs, big ass sound labs that have been donated to the tribe and I can give them away. Um, it needs to be someone that can probably fix one of them because I think it's rattling. The thing, a kid pushed it over and it smacked on the ground and, and then something happened. Maybe the, maybe the membrane tore or some shit like that. But these are sound labs, bro. Those are wicked electrostats. Um, I've got a pair donated. I've also got an amp, a, a, a Parasound amp that um, Wes Woolworth, if Wes is watching, Wes, who is just on here, has donated to the tribe as well. And I can give these away, and I will give these things away. Um, so I don't know. What, why don't you guys tell me? What's the best way to give this stuff away? Do I, like, do a raffle? Do I do a drawing? Do I... Do I like um, have people write and you know an essay why they would be the best person to have this stuff? Like I'm going to give it away free and nobody's paying for anything. You just pay for shipping or you go pick it up. Um, I really don't know how to um, to uh, to do that. Maybe you guys can suggest something. So thank you. I use Springs in a way no one ever thought. It's in my patent application. Cool. Will you use them up your butt? <laughs> Nobody ever thought about that. <laughs> uh, we don't slag tribe members. No, we don't. But we have fun with one another, don't we? Oh, I forgot. Stereo 11 Fuse and Jumper Upgrade. Yeah, see, that's the Fuse and Jumper Upgrade. That's what I recommend for the Maggies. No click Mikey. No, man. I don't I don't, I don't. don't give a shit, you know? You guys either like me or you don't. And you're. I'm, I'm here to sell you stuff. And I'm here to tell you about cool shit that I find that I'm willing to put my name on and sell it to you guys. That's what I'm here for, okay, is, is to, to, to curate audio systems for people, not to get clicks, you know. So Doman turntables use springs for suspension. Shane should know about them as it's an Australian. Okay. Shane has Kuzma. But both is Australia. Okay. I get clickbaited all the time with these best insert component ever videos. So tired of them. Of course you guys are. Imagine what it's going to be like in a year from now, you guys. You guys are going to be, be beat silly. The more I go on to YouTube, the more I see this shit is going to more and more extreme levels of retardation to get people to click. And I'm not going to I'm not going to do it, man. I won't be part of that. I, I just won't. Uh, you guys will watch my damn channel grow with zero marketing behind it. There's going to be zero freaking hashtags, zero clickbait, zero beautiful audio and uh, videos and all that shit. And you're going to see this channel grow regardless, okay? I don't need to do that shit, okay? And I'm not going to. It doesn't make me feel good. So, yeah, I, I'm sure you're getting sick of it. I, I, I'll bet. Talk to Shane about his Wilson upgrades. They're impressive. I'll bet. I'll bet. Aha, you were in the Falcon room with me at Expona in 2018 or 19 when I bought them there. I think it was the Cambridge room, free drinks. Who was? Me? I don't remember that. You brought them there. What were uh Cambridge room? You brought, bought them. Oh, bought them. I don't know what the Falcons are. Con man, I know Mark quite well. Cool. I'm upgrading from MTD6. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you are. Oh shit, I got to get you that invoice. Look at that. I mean, Danny am, is like, am I? Am I? What, what kind of? Well, I can't call you Danny because then that other guy's Danny. So you're 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 Drago. Oh, Drago. Um, Mr. Dan down here, the man who is a patent attorney. Oh, extraordinaire. Um. You want some technology? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Conman's talking about it. Remember last time, Dan's like, dude, I'm a patent attorney. What are you talking about? Um, uh, so that's kind of fun. But but yeah, Dan is getting an MPD-8, man. I am going to take back his MPD-6. I'm buying it back at 100% of what he paid for it, and I'm getting him the MPD-8. And you're going to love it, brother. You are going to love it. Awesome. You will love it, Drago. He will love it for sure. Oh, snap. You know it, Davey. 
DM, I will point out the big dogs like Magica owners would likely not ship a 60K speaker to get upgraded. Um, so in some respects, upgrading a $1,000 panel makes much more sense and much more likely the client. Um, well, you know, I mean, the real bottom line is a 60K speaker doesn't need a mod. And it, it, you can't, you, you, you want to start, you're going to look like a real, I don't know, ballsy person if you just try, who knows? I mean, it's like, look, man, either, 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 I, I, I understand why people mod cheap shit because they can't, ex they can't afford the expensive shit. There's nothing wrong with that, dude. I used to be there. You should see my shop. If I took you guys outside to see my shop where I used to upgrade shit. Because I couldn't afford any anything more. And, and I went nuts on it. Then one day, I was able to afford something better. I got the freaking MPD-8. And the MPD-8 is what stopped me modding. I was like, no freaking way I'm touching this thing. In fact, it was a year before I even opened it to look inside. Because I was like, this thing is so freaking good, I don't want to open it even. You know, It's like bad juju to open it, you know? Because my intention when I open shit is to, you know, mod it. Not anymore. I lost that. With Jeff Rowland, you look inside Jeff Rowland. So when I had Jeff Rowland and I put playback designs together and um, Fisher and Fisher, it's like I, I'm not even looking to, to upgrade. Could, could I open up the Fisher and Fisher um, crossover and, and improve it? Maybe, you know. But I don't even want to mess with it, man. It's already there. So I get what you're saying. Um, it, it's not it, – it, 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 I'm, I'm not arguing – um, I, I just don't think you um, you slag the brand that makes the one thousand dollar made in USA speaker. That's that's the point. You don't slag the brand. I'm going to stick up for him. And if you slag the brand, I'm going to stand in their corner. Okay, I'm not going to stand in your corner. Like, oh yeah, they're so dumb. I'm going to stand in their corner and say, you know, you don't understand the speaker. I saw Danny's vid. He was mostly positive of Maggie's. He was showing what is possible. His LRS would probably be the best. $2,000 speaker on the market. Only listening could tell us for sure. Wow. He's your boy, huh? Um, cool. I think that if, if it's, if, if, if his LRS would, would probably be the best $2,000 speaker on the market. That could be, I mean, it's not hard to make a, a but, but why is um, his LRS? It's not his LRS. It's it's Magnapan's LRS with Danny's crossover shit in it. So anybody knows you can change from cheap uh, iron core to air core. Like that's any dildo knows to do that, right? That's nothing magic. We know you can take cheap ass electrolytics and bypass them with film and foils. We know you can you can you can put better quality resistors in there, non magnetic, non inductive resistors. We know that. That's like not any sort of genius. Um, and um, you know who's would probably be the best two thousand dollars speaker on the market is the one point seven. Probably beat. Uh, I'm sorry, the point seven for two grand probably beats Danny's LRS Plus modded. I think Magnapan can do a better job than Danny does. If Magnapan wanted to, they would do the better job. So I I don't see any 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 sense in giving him credit for what Magnapan created. I understand he's trying to fix it. He he's trying to come up with a product that can he can sell a hundred pieces of. I, I get it. Um and and Magnapan LRS Plus, there's freaking five thousand of them out there. So I understand from a business standpoint, but again, whatever. You guys know why I didn't like it. That's when BMW speakers were good. The Kevlar mid-range. Yeah, totally, man. That's what I told him. I said, Dude, man, those old BMW BMWs and the Cord amp was back when Cord was killer too. Surprised that Dan D'Agostino amp doesn't have copper plate inside. Wow. I know, man. Pretty crazy. Cigar obsession. We need a detailed reply from Magnapan. I had the detailed re reply. And dude, you need to get in contact with me, bro. Like, um, hold on, man. I mean... Oh, 
You know what these are? Edition Limitada? Yeah, well, I collect them. Um, so, yeah, get in contact with me, brother. Um, if you got a cigar obsession, um, let's, some, let's share some sticks, bro, because I have a cigar obsession, too. Um, that is only... That is only three of maybe, you know, I don't know, 40 boxes I have in there. Um, anyways, so yeah, Magnapan gave me a detailed reply. I was on the phone with them today. The second I saw Danny's video, I called up my boys in the in the back and I said, dude, what is this dude? Your friend or foe? You know, it sounds like a foe. He's slagging the brand, man, on your on your thousand dollar speakers, you know. They gave me that, they were the ones that told me about what how they were designed and why they were designed that way. So, yes, I will go for it, Dan. Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> exactly. Hello from Richardson. There. What's up? Oh, hey, man. How are you? Brent. Brent is the guy. I came by Brent's house, man. What's up, Brent? Brent, we, we, Brent, I went by his house and he had those killer PMC speakers. We put in the playback designs. We listened to his MSB. Um, how how is it how how is it settling in, Brent? Did you did you did you stay in the low in in the in the the the, the chair position that I moved it to and all that kind of stuff? Did you stick with that the tune? What maybe you can you can um maybe you can say a little something about the room tune. I went by Brent's place and I did a room tune. He had a super cool house too, by the way. It was beautiful and 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 it had a whole little casa for me to stay at. I was like so sweet, bro. And the softest pillow bed I've ever been. It's like a freaking sleeping on a marshmallow. It was great. I was cocooned out. And then I got up in the morning and we went up and we tuned the room. Then we jumped in in um, in the uh, Panamera S and went for a little little cruise. And and, and he dropped me off at at, at or, or or we went uh, where did did you you oh, or, yeah we went to oh oh yeah that's right I remember all that. So anyways I went and got the barbecue after that. It was good brisket, killer brisket. The ribs weren't that great. Um, Next time I'm going to the dirty place. I want I want the dirty place. I want the I'm I'm going for the dirty. And I know that you you told me you said this place is the clean and you you gave me the lowdown and I chose it. But I think um on the flip side, next time I'm going for the dirty place. So tell me more. Tell me more, Brent. Tell me about um about uh uh now wait a second. No, Brent, see, I'm going off, dude, and Brent was not in Richardson. Brent was in, um, I want to say Plano. Let's see. Or he was, let's see. Oh, no, it wasn't Brent. It was, um, no, it was David. Okay, that's right. That was David. That was David. Okay, so. B Walker. Is your name Brent Walker? <laughs> I just went off and you're you're not the dude. <laughs> oh my god, what a re, what, what a retread I am. Um anyways, so see that's I got just so so much going on, man. I can't keep track of it. I can't buy any audio for around a couple of years cuz I have to pay for some bridge accident in Baltimore with my tax dollars. Holy shit, bro. That was crazy, man. That was nuts, though. Can't believe that. Haven't heard of Diagostino I like yet. Me neither. And I, I think that's probably because it's MOSFET. Is that not right, Shane? Isn't isn't Diagostino MOSFET amps? And it's like, who would make a MOSFET amp? Yuck. I mean, dude, whatever. Um, in my opinion. The one time I don't drink and drive a container ship and I have to pay for it. Yeah, exactly. Surprised that Dan Diagostino doesn't have any copper plate and slide. Wow, yeah, I know, man. They use it on the outside, all the wrapping, right? Hey, from the new guy in Richardson, Texas. What's up, man? Um, you know, um, Tom was in Richardson. Okay, so, man, you're confusing me, man. Did we hang out? Um, Thomas, Tom is in, is in Richardson. Um, let's see. I want to make sure. Yeah, Thomas, Thomas B. Um, 
I've got a guy in Richard uh, in Richardson to hook you up with, man. If you want, you want an audio file. I went to his house in tune. He's got some. His name is Thomas. He's got some uh, uh, Wilsons and um, and and shit. He, he's he, he he. If if you want somebody to hang with, just let me know. Do a photo contest. Photo contest of what? You want to see my boobies? Um. Hi, Mikey. Did you get the chance to test the audio analog DAC in Bluetooth mode? I did with the LDAC audio codec. Is it any good for critical? It's, 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 yeah. it is, it is, um, it is more for convenience. Um, we, 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 we played the Bluetooth version and then we played, um, and that was just Bluetooth coming from my phone. Um, and it was 1644. And then we played the $11,500 streamer streaming to the same DAC via AES, freaking smoked it. Wasn't even, I mean, it, it really, honestly, it wasn't close. Like if you listen to the Bluetooth, excuse me, man, I'm sorry, these bubbly waters, man. Um, if you listen to the Bluetooth on its own, you come into the room, you just listen to Bluetooth, it sounds freaking great. You're like, wow, this sounds great. I can't believe this is Bluetooth. And then you put on the streamer and then you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. There is a huge difference. Like, um, so we'll leave it at that. It was convenient. It is convenient. Anybody can come in. Anybody in your family can go ahead and use the damn thing and stream to the to the deck and in the audio system. And um, you know, if somebody calls you on your phone, it's going to pause the music. If you start flipping through your phone and doing weird stuff. It might do little dropouts, you know, because you're changing screens sometimes. So it's not completely foolproof. It's definitely not reference critical listing, you know. It's it's more so for convenience, and it is very convenient. But really, if you want to get critical, this DAC has so much to give. You give it like a killer signal, and it's like, holy crap, this DAC is good, you know. So don't underestimate this double A DAC. I mean, for real. All three of them are sold already. So I'm um, I'm 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 gonna place an order tomorrow. I'll get probably five this time around, and then we'll have some more. And I have the to transport. You guys haven't seen the transport. Let me show you this. Um, I've got a photo right here that I took today, which is here is it with um with the transport. Whoops. Let me get this. Oops, come on. There it is. See if I can make this focus. Hang on. There, see it? Like that's that's it with the transport on top. And this is no slouch transport. This is made with the TIAC um, drive, and and it's serious. It's it's as heavy as the DAC is. It's solid. It's unbelievable. So for people that spin discs, and I think I can't remember the price on it. I think it's like twenty five hundred bucks or something. It's 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 not. It's half the price of the DAC. I think. Um, so that thing is sweet. That stack is really killer. So yeah, so the Bluetooth is more for convenience. Best way is to just give it to me, <laughs> right? That's what I say to enter, enter. You, you could, you could put a lot of things that, that is a, is a very open statement, open for jokes. Mark Diamond, very passionate about his turntables. That's cool. Yeah, write a riddle for us to figure out and give the gear to the winner. There you go. What an idea that is. Man, I gotta, I've never even tried riddle writing. Man, I still have this thing. Shit. I better use it. You ever seen this stuff? Polish Angel? Man, this is good shit. This thing's like a hundred bucks. It's freaking car polish. Polishing gel, palladium. Yeah. Use by hand or machine, highly efficient. Small amount will go very far. Okay. Do you know if the Sublime K235 XLR version basically it is the same thing internally except for the SLR? Yes. K235 will cost twice as much as K231, eh, roughly. So it doesn't the, the the K235 is 500 and the um the, the, I'm sorry the K231 
is uh, 500, and the K235, I think, is 800 right now. So it's not double. Um, but yeah, basically. So do you want a big chassis and uh, an XLR? Then, um, and if you don't carry, if you want to pinch pennies, then you buy the small one. It's the same. It's the same board. Now, wait a second. He did tell me that they made improvements, but I don't know if the improvements retroact to the other one. Um, but when they did this project, they did make improvements to the piece. Mikey, I'll take the Parasound amp for shipping cost. I'll even throw in, I don't know, something to sweeten the deal. What, a bag of weed? <laughs> Where are you? Cookies. I'll take cookies. Um, I don't even smoke weed anymore. Um, uh, cookies. I'll take food. I don't know. You need to convince me. And, and maybe I need to do a riddle. I need to do a riddle, but how do I make a riddle? I got to take a class. Mikey, I'd love and appreciate the Parasound amp. Unfortunately, I unfortunately have to sell my tube rig. Oh, really? Why, man? See, so Nick, put it put it on the website where these guys can pick it up, man, and, and hook up a tribe member, and then they'll hook you up. Some cash. Pooch, would I say it's more rare to have DAC do DSD as uh, DSD well? Or is DSD easier to execute and most of them will reliably be a close comparison? Man, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that one. I'd say pretty much, pretty much hands down, DSD does beat PCM. Um, I think that's pretty well known as a recording and as just the, the, the file and the way it works. I think DSD beats it. Um, I'm pretty sure about that. Um, I don't know about that last one. I'm not sure. How is that patent application going, Coleman? <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go with the names. <laughs> uh, DM won't leave it alone. Um uh shane you should try osborne grand monuments 175 kg each night jar now i totally redesigned the crossover for my speakers and it made a huge difference all measured and phase coherent and a great on and off access response and low distortion it does take work yeah not i don't have time for that shit anymore absolutely brother the mpd8 is just as good as i've ever heard a dac be yeah i would agree Charles Harrison, leave what alone? He asked, I told him to read the comments he did and then said, pick on big dog. So I gave insight. That's it. What's there to leave alone? It was legit feedback. Yeah, I think it was legit feedback. I didn't, I didn't feel like you were being weird. I had the audio analog Primo integrated amp like 15 years ago. Wow. Nice piece. Wonder how the new models sound in comparison. They're pretty, ki they're, they're killer, man. I'm, I'm surprised. I'm listening right now to the amp and that little DAC. And I'm feeding it with the Playback Design streamer. And it is, um, I could totally live with it. Hate to say it, hate to say it, but I, I could, I'm going to put the Playback Designs in. And when I put the Playback Designs in, it will remind me why I love the Playback Designs. But right now, with those two in, the, in place, I'm not... I'm not like pulling my hair out. I'm not bumming. I'm not like, like if I needed, let's say to sell this playback to somebody and I needed to use this DAC for a while until I could get the new playback, um, I would be fine with that. You know, it's that good. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's again, it's an anomaly. It's a sleeper. It's, um, that's all I can say, man. I, I can, I can only say, tell you so much. Right. I'm not advocating for Danny. I just think he was honestly trying to improve it. I'm not saying he did because I didn't hear the upgrade. He probably did improve it. And, and, and that's not really, um, what I'm, I'm, I'm contesting. What I'm doing is saying, dude, leave Magna Pan's $1,000 speaker alone, dude. Like not, not like, like in other words, just make your mod for it and say that you've got a mod for it, but don't, say, look at how shitty MagnaPan did their $1,000 made in USA speaker. It's like, what do you expect for $1,000, dude? Like, of course, it, it, it is the way it is. And then second of all, they're, they're supposed to measure off, you know? 
So that was that was my point on that. I know without question that so many in this industry are cooperative yes boys who manipulate who pays who and who can get traction. I can't imagine being what appears to be an outright pay for whore. Some whores really love doing their job and they empower their whoreness, you know. Um, whores are uh, and, and getting paid for, for shit. I mean, what was the thing I was reading today that Rhonda, whatever chick that was head of the RNC, and then she just got hired on um, a channel to, to, to um, talk shit about Trump, you know. Um, and it's just like, that's the way of the world, man. People are paid to do either shit. They get, they do what they're paid for. They, and, and that's a certain type of individual that just does what they're paid for. And um, they don't really stand for their own convictions. They are paid to be a talking head for other people's convictions. And, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different type of individual. I'm not that type of individual, you know. Other individuals are that type of individual. And it doesn't matter. Some people just don't don't they they're quiet and they're they they don't they don't they do what they're told, they wear a mask, they get the vax, they do all this shit. That's a different that's a different thing than you know the one that and 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 you know whatever. So it doesn't matter. Either way is 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 fine. It's just some people uh sell their opinions mikey starting to sound a bit of an establishment apologist what is that i don't know sorry man you're over my head i don't really know what an establishment apologist is i don't apologize for the establishment is that what you mean like i i apologize for the fucked up shit that the establishment does um, I don't think so. I, uh, um, I like the homies in Minnesota, so I'll fight for them. That's what it is. I'll fight with my boys. Um, that's the bottom line. You really want to get to the bottom of it? You fuck with my friends. I'm going to fight you. That's all there is to it. Okay. How's that? Um, I have an MPD, MPS five playback designs. How does it compare to the MPD eight? Um, Oh, uh, the MPD-8 is totally different, man. The MPS-5 is from the previous era, and the MPD-8 is the Dream Series. They they have a new, it, it's the new, it's the breakthrough, you know? So um, it's different, man. The MPS-5 was pretty good, but the MPD-8 is a whole nother world, man. A whole nother world. Magnapan offers parts upgrades now on any current models called the X version. That is true, except for LRS Plus um, at about a grand more. You can even ship then your current model to upgrade, so not just on buying new. That is true, but they do not do that for LRS Plus. Danny thinks the LR Plus is a great value. It is. I sold Maggie's 40 years ago and owned three different pairs. We all can agree they're awesome for the money, but they can be improved. Yes, for sure. That I, I, I don't think anybody, I'm not, I don't think I said anywhere they can't be improved. You know, I said you know, realize that they're tuned different, whatever. I think it's been beat into the, into the ground. Great find in audio analog. I think so too, man. I think it was a great, it, it's do my intentions must be right because between playback designs, new on tech, Fisher and Fisher audio analog, it's like, I'm like, okay, I'm doing something right because my, 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 I'm, I'm getting brands that are exactly what I'm looking for, for you guys. Exactly. They tick all the boxes, value, performance, quality, and good looks. It's like, what, what more would I want? So I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I feel blessed. I think hi-fi sales are slow in UK. Are you experiencing that in USA? Not, not me. Maybe other people are. I don't know. Mike, you should listen to seven foot GR research and extreme $5,000 kit that kills most speakers I've heard. Danny certainly is no dummy. He only upgrades speakers that unsatisfied customers send him. Okay, um, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm really, um, you know, uh, uh, the last thing I'm interested is, is, is a fucking kit, dude. Like, um, why do I want to listen to a kit? Do I want to make a kit? Emphatically, no. 
Not at all. I don't even want to go close to a shop, much less a fucking kit. So I appreciate that that you're. Uh, there was a point in my life that I that I would want to do a kit, and the reason was I couldn't afford the speakers, so I had to cheap out because I didn't have the money. Now I do have the money. My clients do have the money. My clients aren't worried about a fifty thousand dollars speaker. My clients are not worried about an eighty thousand dollar amplifier or a $50,000 amplifier, and certainly not a $24,000 DAC, okay? So the $5,000 kit is not in my scope of interest. Um, I'm sure it's great. I'm sure a lot of people love it. I'm not saying Danny is a dummy, and I never said he was a dummy. I said if you slag on MagnaPan, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defend MagnaPan. I mean, I, I don't know how much more clear I can fucking make that, man. And yes unsatisfied kef customers send danny shit unsat it's no wonder i mean we've got un we've got unsatisfied one thousand dollar speaker customers okay um uh, what do you expect for a thousand dollars do you expect complete satisfaction you're smoking rock if you think you're going to get complete satisfaction for a one thousand dollar speaker when you have aspirations of being an audiophile you're not going to get shit for $1,000, period. So MagnaPan is the best that's out there in stock form for $1,000. So I understand that there are unsatisfied customers because they're unsatisfied because they have a champagne taste and a beer budget. So Danny's taking care of those people. I'm not, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? That's, that's beautiful. It's, it's great. But to, I'm not going to go into it, you know. Yeah, I've I, I made the point so many fucking times. I'm not going to go into it. Flying crazy eyes kill it early. Most handies get the subs. You're the best, Mikey. Right on, brother. Thanks, Malcolm. What's the story behind MPD8 DAC? When and how did you first buy one? If it's a long story, maybe next time. It is a great story. I had a customer tell me about it. A customer who wanted to buy this thing, and he said, Mikey, um, I'm really interested in this DAC. I've heard it's great. Um, can you check it out for me and get one, get a sample and listen to it or buy one and listen to it? And if it if it passes muster, if you tell me it's great and you it passes your ears, I'll buy it. And I said, well, that's pretty cool. You know, sure. Let me try and get one. So I contact the distributor and said, hey, I've heard about this DAC. I want to check it out. Will you send me one? He said, no problem. He sent it to me. I tried it and it was really funny because he sent it to me right off the cuff. And then after sending it, um, I think he looked to see on my channel who I was. I just told him who I was. I'm this and I do this and I sell this and I'm rolling dealer and blah, blah, blah. So he sent it, boom, right away, you know, based on my, my cred. And then he looked at me and saw me on, 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 on Facebook or on <laughs> YouTube. And I think he got spooked. He's like, holy shit, I just sent this guy a $26,000, or it was a $30,000, because it was the all-in-one MPD-8 that he sent, MPS-8, the all-in-one everything, you know, with the transport and all that shit. And that one doesn't, that has one less power supply to make real estate for that transport. So I had one that was kind of a dumbed-down MPD-8, as it were, and it still beat everything I ever heard. Um, and I was like, oh my God. All I had to hear was that, I, I remember the song that sold it for me, was Ted Nugent Stranglehold, and I heard that first guitar. That bite. Okay, I grew up with a with a brother who had a Mesa boogie and a and a Les Paul, and he would play guitar ad nauseum. I was so sick of hearing guitar every day in the house as he was learning, because I would hear that shit all the time. So I know exactly what a freaking electric guitar sounds like, and it has bite on it. When, when you have, you know, and, and that Nugent guitar, that, that stranglehold has, has, has a toothy edge to the, the, the leading edge of that, that guitar. And, and, and it has, it has that, that bite. And, and I'd never heard it so clear until I had it, uh, until I listened to that MPS-8. I was like, oh my God, that's all I needed to hear. 
I put the thing in the box because he was worried. I could tell he was worried. Can you send it back? I've got to put it in someone's. He came up with some. I'm sure it was an excuse, but he was, I could tell. I'm like, I'll send it back, bro. Don't worry. So I packed it up, sent it back the next day. All I needed to hear was that little bit. I, I could tell immediately that it beat my APL, which the APL had beat my Rockna. The Rockna had beat my Metrum Acoustics. The Metrum Acoustics had beat my Lampazator Golden Gate. The Lampazator Golden Gate had beat my April Music or Stello Eximus. Um, the Eximus had beat my. Can I even remember back that far? I don't remember what my DAC was before that. But anyways, um, and so I bought one. I was like, that's all I need to hear. I said, uh, let me let me get one. I bought it. I got it in. I listened to it. I was like, I called my customer. I'm like, dude, this is the sickest DAC I've ever heard. It's freaking, it's killer. It's like, this is incredible, bro. Um, sold it to him. I bought another one. And then, and then it was like, and then, and then I became their top gl global seller. I sell, my volume is only beat by all of China's volume. So let me say that. Me alone as one person, I sell a few pieces under um, China. All of China. There's one distributor in China. They order a pallet. You know, they get 12 at a time and uh, they either get 12 or 10. I think they get, they get a dozen. Okay. Um, I don't know how often they order a dozen, but I order like six per quarter. So maybe I sell half, but that's all of China. So anyways, I went from being this guy that they're probably like, oh shit, who did we just send this to? Kooky guy, pretty crazy ponytail, all this shit to being their top freaking seller. Um, and, and it's just because I'm enthusiastic about it. You guys know I'm real and I'm telling, and, and I have good ears. I went to the Capital Audio Fest to show y'all I can, I can make a room and build a rig. I'm not just a YouTube guy getting clicks. I, I actually know this stuff inside and out and I'm a curator of audio systems. So anyways, the rest was history, man. The rest was history. That's was the story behind the MPD-8 and, and how I got to, and I learned about Andreas. I found out all about his background. This guy is the guy who de designed SACD for Sony. He created um, uh, 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 sample rate conversion and was on the patent. He hired Ed Meitner of M Labs. Then they broke off and they started M Labs together uh, after they left Sony because he hired Ed at, at Sony. And just the whole story. I'm like, how does nobody know about this guy? Like, like how is this so under the radar? It's a total insider's brand. Playback Designs is a brand of attraction, not a brand of promotion. It is completely the opposite of, say, MSB, which is just promoted profusely everywhere, right? Um, uh, this is an insider's brand, and I bring it to you guys, and it's a phenomenal piece. So that, that's the story. Hope that wasn't too long. Nova's PC10 Plastic Polish and Shine, dude, insane stuff. I use it even on my expensive nitro guitars and on everything. I swear by it. What's a nitro guitar? Sounds cool. <clears throat> Nova's PC. Oh, Nova's. Yeah, we use those on the motorcycle helmets. Novus, if it's the one I'm thinking of. DM, sorry, my bad. It's all right. Charles doesn't mean any harm, DM. MagX upgrade program is better capacitors, coils, wiring, connections, and gold inputs instead of nickel. You should maybe do a before-after comparison vid to let us know if worth it. Again, um, until I'm a MagnaPan dealer, if I if I ever become a MagnaPan dealer, um, which I'm, I'm not really trying to, um, you know, it would be cool because I really love the brand. But I'm typically not a, a, a dealer that runs along with, you know, like I'm one of 80 dealers across the United States. I'm not really interested in those brands. I'd rather be the guy where I'm the only one for a couple reasons. One, because then nobody shops me and there's nobody else discounting shit, right? When you get 80 dealers around, people start discounting. And then two jackasses in the United States do all the volume because they're discounters you know, and everybody else doesn't. But anyways, um, yeah. And, and not only this, um, um, uh, the, the Eps, uh, X upgrade program includes silver solder. There is no, um, clip-ons, everything soldered. So they don't, they don't, um, have those shitty interfaces of the little fast on connectors. So David Cross agrees with me. 
Well, for $260 mod, you do not get a new plate or mounted crossover. About $70 worth of parts. The research is worth some of the price. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure it's it's worth it. I'm not, I'm not saying um, – I, I didn't even question the price of the thing, you know. Um, and if it's only $260, <laughs> that's ridiculous, you know. If it's two hundred and sixty dollars, I gotta say, fucking hats off to Danny for for spending the fucking time to package that shit up and mail it for making what two hundred fucking dollars? Holy shit! Hats off to Danny, man. Damn, dude, you would not find me doing that shit for two hundred dollars a kit. I don't give a shit. If I sold a hundred of them. It's just it's 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 way too much work. Way too much. Way too much logistics and work for 200 measly dollars per kit, forget it. I don't need it. Um, so the fact that it's 260, that gives, that, that, that makes me feel like that softens the blow for slagging the brand, but still, still. So anyways, you want to perform Maggie surgery on your magnet pans, pull them open, change them into Danny mag, Danny pans or whatever. Go for it, man. It's 260 bucks. You got the time to pull those socks off and 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 mess with that then do it great man i mean uh, i'm all for it you know again you guys know why i was upset just said all about all the serious archivists these days are using dsd to archive analog tape that should say it all exactly too big for my room but i'll have some more greg speakers on the channel soon greg from what from uh no not that greg love the agostino progression amp um i still appreciate you that's cool. Um, was the progression, that thing that I just showed you, $36,000? I don't know if that was the pro progression. Was that the progression? Um, yeah. I don't know, bro. Here's the other thing is those are brands that are sold half price anyways. Tell me if anybody pays $36 for it or are they just for sale everywhere for half price? Um, and, then, and then that lets you know kind of like... Let's you know a little bit more about the brand. <clears throat> There's a great article on, online comparing PCM to DSD. Both have pros and cons, but I think DSD is better past a certain resolution. It's a great article. Yeah. Good, Shane. Osborne speakers seem to be great, as far as I know. PCM with all possible advantages is spectacular. DSD tends to soften the sound slightly. <clears throat> yeah, so do you want hard or do you want soft? You know? I'll take soft any day over hard, you know, because hard edgy sound sucks. It's not, it's not, it's not enjoyable. DSD sounds 10 times more enjo in, enjoyable. Um, but I mean, the DAC I'm listening to in there right now is PCM. Still sounds great. But um, if I had to choose, it would be DSD all the way. The Agostino designs look to be uh, bipolar, not MOSFET. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, it would be ridiculous to make MOSFET because MOSFET is so inferior to me. I mean, MOSFET, if you want a lot of power and you're like a pro-amp, like a carver or a crown, then you do MOSFET. But bipolar sounds better. Um, Montreal Audio shows this weekend. It was very nice. Of course, I say hello to Ambi Sloan. But Audio Note Room from Danny Hart, steampunk designer. Tad, very interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, tell us more. What up, Mikey? Finally got in for the live stream. What up, Vooch? Good to see you, man. David Cross, bingo analysis of those weak ones lacking honor who are willing to sell themselves for a payment to purvey to feed them opinion. <laughs> uh, a lot of people love a good hooker, you know. Um, it's the long hair. I'm going to start growing mine back. Yeah, there you go, buddy. Past my bedtime. I know, me too, Jason. I got to go. Now tell us the story behind Fisher and Fisher's story if you can. How did you find them? Okay, here's another good one. So one of you guys told me about Fisher and Fisher. I was uh, on, one, on, on one of my response, on one of my things, uh, um, um, videos, there was a response of a guy that said, listen to Fisher and Fisher and hear the sound of slate. You won't go back. You won't believe it. Like, it's amazing. And I was like, okay, what the hell's Fisher and Fisher? So I looked it up. I saw it. I was like, wow, this looks like some cool shit. Um, I called some people in Germany. I said, what is it? I, I got some tribe members in Germany. Oh, yeah, we saw it at the show. It was okay. It wasn't that great. And I was like, hmm, okay. Knowing what I know about 
shows, I'm like, maybe it wasn't teamed up with the right amps or it wasn't the right music or whatever. Let me take a crack at it. So I call them up. I see there's no U.S. distribution. I'm like, that's pretty wild. Maybe they suck, you know. Um, so I order up a couple pairs. I ordered up one pair. I think I ordered. Did I start with one pair or two pairs? Can't remember. Uh, one pair. I ordered one pair. So let me try these things. One pair. That's right. Got one pair in and listen to them. And I was like, holy shit. These are really good. These are really good speakers. Um, I listened to them more, let them break in. I was like, I, 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 I can't believe these speakers are that good. I can't believe nobody in the U.S. has them. Like, what's wrong with this picture? Um, I bring friends over, Big John. Other people came to listen. Everybody's like, dude, these are phenomenal sounding. And I'm like, holy shit, is this really this good to be true? Same kind of thing. Too good. Like, I can't believe it. Um, I secured the exclusive distribution. Next order was like five pair. The order after that was nine pair. It's like... Um, it's just like, I just keep ordering more. I've got the $80,000, 650-pound speakers on uh, coming next. Um, it's, uh, I mean, these, I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have, I mean, it's like, you know, the, 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 the um, what do they say? The saying, stepped in shit? Like, that's how I feel. I feel like, like, what good fortune? Like, this is such a giant killer. And I hate that term, but these are true giant killer. That's what I'm saying. Same with uh, audio analog, man. It's like audio analog, playback designs, Fisher and Fisher. These brands are like ridiculous for what you get for the money. And, and wait till I do this amplifier. Uh, wait till I break it down for you guys. And I show you the inside and I show you the builds of the amplifier. And then I show you this audio analog. And, and right now I'm playing it with the Fisher and Fisher 770s. And, you know, I mean, these things are freaking phenomenal. Everybody who orders them, who gets them, is like, Mikey, these are the most nutso speakers I've heard. They sound freaking killer. They're And they're so worth it, man. Um, they're still in the Goldilocks zone, you know. Uh, can't say that for everybody, man. They, 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 they switch one day, and the next thing you know, everything is, uh, is double the price. Shane says he's worked as a sound engineer, so I've heard just about every instrument there is to hear, more or less, and that's why I love MPD-8, because it sounds so real. That's what I tell people, man. They're like, well, what's the difference between that and, and something like a MSB, which is very close? It's just the playback sounds more real. It sounds more organic, more actually like a real thing. Um, and, and it's totally true. Sounds more real is the exact thing that I say. What up, man? How are you? Gleam. PCM done with every possible advantage is anything but hard or harsh. Hyper engagement realism. Whatever, dude. Okay. You got a boner for PCM. I got a boner for uh, DSD. So what do you want to do? Sword fight? Do any of the new OnTech convert to DSD like the playback does? No, they don't. I think one of the PS Audio DACs converts to DSD. It does. PS Audio DAC attempts to do what playback design does. I mean, it does it, but it's just nowhere near. Same with Rockna does the same thing. Same with M Labs does the same thing. They don't come close um, in the in the test that I've done. Did I did you record Men at Work, Shane? Come from London, London. You want to hear me sing? <laughs> hey, Mikey. Here in Sweden, there is a P Playback Design distributor too. Apparently, most all his sales are directly or indirectly related to your videos and marketing. You're a great ambassador for the brand. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's what that's what they're they're saying. Um, you know, like the it's picked up. Like Europe was dead ever since I've been I've been talking about it. Like Europe totally picked up. I will I will uh, I'm going to take a picture of this comment, and uh, of course because this will um, this will be uh, I'll smile. Hi. Okay, taking a picture because I'm going to send that to Andreas. Okay, so um, no, I recorded Kate Sibrano. I also did some live shows in the last Joe Cocker tour in Australia, amongst other things. That's cool. My AM DAC converts PCM to DSD and goes to seven. Okay. Uh, and same that I know Colin Hayes, a nice guy, lead singer, men at work. Oh, yeah. Cool, Shane. Almost keyword all DACs make a mess with the filters and conversions. 
Um, yeah, well, almost all decks. Playback's pretty damn good at it. All right, so I'm going to run, guys. It's it's two hours, and um, um, I need to go to bed and have some water and chill. So thanks for joining, everybody. I appreciate it. Love you all, and um, uh, thank you so much. Keep sending me your business. If you guys want me to get you across the line, consult with you, um, and curate your audio rig, I will be there for you. Just give me a call, and the number is on 11stereo.com. All right. I will see you guys later. See you.